Welcome again to the GNW Show. I'm your host, Karen Donovan. Thank you for stopping by this Wednesday evening to join us. And tonight we're going to be covering something really important. So don't get your feelings hurt on strategies for a happy life. Let's go. So, I don't know about you, but you remember that old children's nursery rhyme? Sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, it's not really true sometimes, is it? I mean, it hurts sometimes when people um, hurt your feelings, right? I know that that's happened to me. I sometimes cry in public, don't like to do that, but sometimes your feelings just get the better of you. But let's talk about feelings tonight because, you know, we've been studying the happiness trap with Russ Harris. And Russ says that usually feelings are triggered by some event, okay? It could be in your mind, it could be a memory like, you know, we just went through the holiday time and you're happy and all of a sudden you think about something that's not so happy and you get sad, get depressed, get angry, <laughs> all those feelings, right? Um, and then sometimes it's like something in the world around you, like, you know, a loud noise, a sound, a smell. And, you know, there's happy feelings, sad feelings. But how do we, how do we control those feelings? Like, you know, you say, okay, for 2022, I'm only going to have positive feelings. But then those 2021 feelings come back and haunt you, annoy you, aggravate you, get you mad, get you happy. So, you know, your, your body does one of two things when you get a feeling. You either, it's either a feeling of danger, which, you know, we learned from back in the caveman days, it's fight or flight, and we got to get ready because there's a danger ahead. Or your mind says, hmm, this isn't a pleasant feeling. This is an interesting feeling. And Let's check it out. So your brain is working and your, your mind takes notice of these things. So how do you combat the negative feelings? Well, I've come up with three in my research, of course, uh, three suggestions that might work for you, maybe one of them, maybe two of them, maybe all three of them, maybe none of them. I don't know, but uh, it's worth a shot. So in, in the happiness trap, um, Russ Harris 
says, avoid overgeneralizing. Like say you made a mistake, right? Let's just say that um, you were going along fine, and then all of a sudden you said something, you know, really <laughs> not so brilliant. And you say, why do I do that? I'm stupid. I, I, I do that all the time. And no, that's not what we're going to do this year. Instead, I look to my friend, and he was a trainer. He was a great trainer back in the day. And some of you, my realtor buddies from way back, are going to remember Tom Hopkins. And one of the things he said was, I never see failure as failure itself, but only as an opportunity to practice my performance and perfect my techniques. So think about that for a second. That works for everything in our lives. And it's, it's lived with me for many, many years, that, that phrase. Think about it and don't overgeneralize. Don't, don't say things like, you know, you're a failure, you're stupid, you made a mistake, you're always sad, things always happen to you. How about just saying, look, things happen, but I'm going, I'm going to look at this as a time that I can practice and perfect my techniques so I can learn from my mistakes, right? Does that make sense to you? Okay, so that's numero uno. Now, the second one is, how about this year treating yourself with some compassion? If your friend was sad or your friend had negative feelings or, you know, they were down and whatnot, would you be hard on them? Would you say, oh, don't think about that anymore or whatever? You would listen to them. You would, you would, you would care for them. You would give them some, some love, right? Well, you got to do that for yourself too. You got to give yourself some self-love, you know, and respect yourself. I, I was, um, looking at a, a quick video by um, Christine Ar Arilo, Arilo, A-R-Y-L-O. And she said, you know, she had a lot of self-esteem. Like she, she thought, you know, she was great and she had a lot of material things. But yet when it came to treating herself well, and not beating herself up. She didn't have self-love. So, I mean, you know, and we're coming up into uh, February here, and we're coming up into Valentine's Day. So how about giving yourself a present, some self-love, taking care of yourself, giving yourself some TLC? You know, you think about others, and you think about helping others. A lot of us do that. But how about doing that for you in 2022? How's that? Now, numero three, live in the present. Now, you think about, you know, your past and you learn from it. That's good. That's cool. Doesn't hurt to do that. You plan for the future. That's good, too. But you have to live in the present. You can't define yourself as what you did before. You've got to define yourself in terms of what you're doing now. It's a new year. And every day is a new day. We're all given that same 24 hours every day to embark upon a new experience. We've learned from the old and we think about and plan for our future. Yes, of course. But we do live, have to live, in the present. We can't dwell on the past if we do, if we're, if we're thinking about the past, like, you know, you're looking around behind you, and then the next thing you know, you crash up. You don't want to do that, and you don't want to think too far ahead because we don't know what the future holds, right? Um, so, you know, I think of... How are you as a, as a child or, or you see little kids around? What are they doing when they're, when they're engrossed in what their play is? You know, whether it's a project, an art project, or whether it's playing outside, 
on the playground or whatever it is, they are totally engrossed in the present. Why can't we follow their example? So that's number three. So I hope that these three little tips to help you get control of, of your feelings and, and steer them in a more positive direction, even though a lot of times we don't have control over it and a lot of times we make mistakes, but we're going to learn from them to just look at things as an ongoing process. And I want to leave you, I want to leave this session, Strategies for a Happy Life, with a quote from one of my heroes. And I will tell you his name at the end. When we can talk about our feelings, they become less overwhelming, less upsetting, and less scary. The people we trust with that important talk can help us know that we are not alone. And that is by Mr. Fred Rogers. I hope you enjoyed our segment on strategies for a happy life. And now coming up, we have some burning questions that will be answered at the Real Estate Corner. Okay, I know that there have been several people who've been feeling, <laughs> you know we used the word on our show the whole way through, our theme for the evening, who have been feeling like there's just something wrong with the smell in my home, and they've been feeling rather uncomfortable about it. So what to do? Do you cover up with those fancy chemical sprays and artificial plug-in smells? No, no, no. In 2022, we're talking about some natural things to do to make you feel great about the smell, the scent in your home. So here we go. I've got three. I like three. I don't know why I like three, but three is a good number. Number one, <laughs> and this one was really cool. I like this one, the lilac room spray. Now, here's what you do to, to make this. You get a um, one of those glass uh, spray bottles from Target. They're a misting bottle, and they look cool. And this, by the way, this one would make a nice gift. This would make a nice gift for... Uh, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, I don't know, any any day. Housewarming gift. And you take the misting bottle. Uh, Target has them for like $11.50. And you put in the following ingredients. Uh, half water. Now, don't laugh. The next ingredient is half vodka. <laughs> now, don't drink it because, you know, that's going to change your feelings level two and your scent, your sense of smell. But... You just mix a half half in this bottle, half water, half vodka, and then you put in about 12 drops of this really cool scent. If you don't like lilac, I mean, I love lilac, but um, it smells like real lilac. You can get the actual essence of lilac on Amazon. I just checked for $6.75 for a nice little bottle, but you put 12 drops in. You spray it, you check and make sure that it's, you know, like you like the scent of it enough or if it's not too strong or whatever. And then um, you put a little label on, a nice little label on there so it looks fancy. And you have a great air freshener that is not artificial. Number two, do it yourself uh, air fresheners that you put out like little, you know, those little things that you plug in 
this one, these are citrus and you round out the inside of the citrus rind like a half of a, a grapefruit or a half of an orange or a half of a lemon. And then you put in sea salt and herbs like cloves or thyme or basil or mint and just stick them in, you know, places that kind of have a, a musty odor, a smelly odor, a dog odor. And it's amazing. Like they last for a couple of days and then you refill them and you, I mean, you put new rinds too, because the rinds get dried out. Number three, did you ever want your house to smell like a five-star hotel? You know, you get into the hotel and everything just smells so clean and fresh and light. Well, we've got the answer. It is lemons and water simmered over the stove and the essence of the lemons wafts out into the air and it is amazing it does change the whole scent of your room and and if your house is small it might change the whole scent of your whole house but in any event those are three tips for feeling better about the scent of your home now on to what everyone has been waiting for well so i'm told tonight's Trivia. So we are talking tonight about feelings. And of course, tonight's trivia question has to do with some sort of feeling. Now, I, I know I've taken literary license <laughs> on the word feelings because we've gone from, you know, your emotional feelings to your feelings, uh, your sense of smell. <laughs> and now we're talking about your sense of touch because this question deals with what is the fabric which is said to feel the softest you know my mind comes up with some very uh, interesting questions on this topic and uh, a lot of folks uh sent in their uh response from their monday morning wake up newsletter, which you too can receive. How do you do that, you ask? Well, just shoot me an email at karen at homesbydonovan.com and request your free copy of our Monday morning wake up. And it will be sent to you in the, the following Monday. And you can check it out. It's got some inspirational things about our topic for the week. And um, also an entry form for our trivia contest. So don't forget to request that if you don't have it already, that you're not getting it every week in your inbox. Some pretty, pretty interesting things in there. All right, so here we go. What is the fabric that is said to feel the softest? A, polyester, B, cotton twill, C, wool, or D, vicuña? Now, a lot of people, it's kind of a dead giveaway because everybody goes, well, it has to be that odd one that she put at the end. <laughs> and if you answer D, Vicuña, you are right. Now, everybody says, well, I know I, th I think it's like an animal. I think it's like a llama, right? Well, yes, you are right. It is a, 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 a llama-like animal who is from the Andes. In South America, and they are only sheared every two years. So they don't even, like a lamb, you know, get sheared every, I guess, every year. But a vicuña only gets sheared once every two years, and it's very small amount. And then it's woven into a fabric, 
it looks, it's a brown color. So they call it gold of the Andes. And they are right about gold because I'll tell you why. Um, it <laughs> Want to know how much it costs? It costs between $399 to $600 for 2.2 pounds of Vicuña. Whereas uh, cashmere is $75 to $85 and wool is five to six dollars. So there must be something to this. And it's uh, one of the softest um, fabrics when it's made. It can be made into blankets, coats, and regular clothing as well. But anyway, if you are in the mood for something soft and you feel like you want something that's very different, why not get some Bacuna? Okay, well, that concludes our show for this evening. I hope you feel good about it. And I am feeling great about having you join me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Make sure and stay safe and make it a great rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Come on kids, it's time to go Tell everybody that you know Watch the good